Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to Shields Live uh, again, Wednesday, April. What is it? The 6th? 6th, I believe. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm standing up. I didn't have a chair ready for me. So uh, <laughs> thanks for joining us again. Um, what better way to spend a gloomy Wednesday afternoon than hanging out with us and um, learning something new. So Jan's got the surgery set up, ready to go. She's going to go through a couple of the different baby lock surgeries. It is surgery month for baby lock, um, for all, for everybody. But um, there are some great specials going on right now with the baby lock surgers as well as in-house specials that we have. So, um, you know, take a look, see what uh, we're going to show you some of the different differences and how easy they are to thread. I know surgeries are frustrating um which is why i chose to take on the baby lock surgeries because i don't like sur threading surgeries so <laughs> these are so much easier and we again will show that we are going to do a drawing like we said, said uh last week so we had a few people again we really appreciate it um since last week we did the scan and cut we're going to give away um jan's holding up yep. some different uh vinyl for the scan and cut so uh the lucky winner is Colleen Damon, cool. congratulations. Okay. Yeah, put so put that there with that. Okay. Um, cool. So again, um, thanks for joining us. I will turn it over to Jan and I will see you after a while. Thanks again. <laughs> Hi, everybody. So it's Wednesday afternoon. We're going to do a little bit of fun. We're going to have a little fun with the surgery here. Um, okay. So just so you know, Jan's a little nervous about the surgery. I know that the surgery is pretty well but I'm not used to teaching surgery. So I, just so you know, I may make a little, a couple boo-boos. So be, be patient with me today. <laughs> Second, I'm going to get the banner turned up. Okay. Get the comments back up here. Hi, everybody. Oh, yay. Karen made it home. Karen was here earlier today. Okay. So what I wanted to do is I just wanted to explore the surgers a little bit. A lot of people tell me, um, you know, why do I need a serger? What would I use it for? There's a lot of reasons to use a serger. Um, I have used a serger to make clothing, doll clothing. Um, I do a lot of edgings like um, on, I make a lot of tote bags and, and, and covers and stuff like that. So I like to have like beautiful covered seams on all that kind of stuff. Um, I actually like to piece with my serger. So I piece quilts with my serger. So that's another option for the serger. Um, sergers sew very quickly. They're, they, they have a, they're very fast. So that's why I like to piece with it because I can piece fast with it. Um, I also like my serger. Like I said, I, I may, used to make a lot more clothing than I do now, but I do like to... Um, I do like to, to make clothes and I made a lot of my doll clothes. So I make porcelain dolls. And so I made a lot of doll clothes, my modern dolls with the serger. Cause I like to have those beautiful covered seams so that they're, they're, they're covered and they're, and they're not going to ravel. So I think, I mean, that's one of the things that I love about the serger. Um, and they're just, they're just fun to play with. There's all kinds of fun, different stitches you can do. So we're going to talk about some of the different baby lock sergers. Okay. So let me go ahead and switch over the camera. So we're going to start with, they have um, several different levels. So we're going to talk about like the entry level, the middle, and the the and the upper end. Okay, so um, we'll do three surgeries here. I'm just going to do some, you know, like I'm going to go ahead and uh, thread these and that kind of thing. So you can kind of get an idea the differences in them. Okay, so we're going to start out with an entry level machine. Okay, hi everybody. People are still saying hi. Hello. All right, so this is the, the entry level machine. This is a mechanical machine. This is kind of a standard serger that you have to manually thread. You also notice that it has tension dials. So it has the four dials where you set your tension yourself. Okay, so this is more of a manual machine. Um, the one thing I do like about this little machine, this is the vibrant, this is the entry level one. Um, the one thing that I really like about this when it comes to, to um, doing the, the threading. This is probably the, one of the easiest um, mechanical machines I've ever threaded because of this. One of the things that people, you know, always worry about with sergers and stuff is that there's all this stuff underneath that you have these looper things underneath. There's no bobbins and, you know, these. So you have to thread a bunch of stuff underneath. Well, often they're very hard to get into. Like, you know, there's all these little spaces and it's hard to get in there. Well, this machine is really awesome because it opens up. 
So I had never seen a machine like this until I, we got these in. And you, you pull this little bar right here. I don't know if you can see it. It's right here. Pull this and look, this whole thing opens up, this little door. And these loopers then are completely exposed in the machine. So it makes it so much easier to thread it. Okay, so if you're just looking for a real basic machine, you know, this, this does a few extra stitches and you can do rolled hems and you can do like a three thread or a four thread. You know, this has some stuff like that, but it's a little bit more manual because you have to set your tensions for the specific um, stitches that you're doing. Okay, so this one has a little bit more involved that you have to read and do the, and, and change some um, tensions and that type of thing. Okay. All right, so I'm just going to kind of go through this one, and I want to show you how you how this threads. I mean, a lot of people ask me, well, how do you thread a serger? So let's just thread it. And I like to start four, three. This one I start lower looper, upper looper, and then I usually do on this one, I like to do the, um, I have to look at it. I like to do the, I have to see what side the opening's on. Oh, I like to do two, one. So four, three, two, one. Okay, not all sergers are like this, but this one is, okay? And it's color coded. So you can see that there's blue here, green here, orange and red. So everything's color coded. So it helps you um, to thread and everything is color coded down here. So there's a nice picture down here as well. So let's start with this one. I've got my, my threads up here already. Make sure that the presser foot is up. I'm gonna raise my needles too, okay? Make sure your presser foot is up. That means the tension is off. And the first thing you do is go through this little tensioner. There's a little tensioner up here on the top. Let me tip the camera up. Okay, there's a little tensioner up there, this little silver thing. And then I'm just going to pull this thread down through that tension unit right here. Okay, straight down. And I'm following the blue right now. So this is going to be the blue. So the first thing I go through is this little thing right here. Okay. And then there's more little blue dots. So there's a little blue dot over here. And I have a little trouble with this because I have to get my glasses on. And then there's another little blue dot over here. Okay, so those kind of pull in there. Okay, so it's pretty easy. But then this is where normally I have trouble with sergers. Like this one has, um, it, I can get into this. So this looper here normally is down underneath on most of the sergers and you can't get to it. But look at here, I can turn this and there's a little notch right here. I don't know if you can see it too well. So you might get the camera a little closer. There's a little notch right here that the thread goes into, see, and I can get to it because I'm not digging around underneath here. So this one's pretty neat. So again, this is still a mechanical machine. I, I struggle a little bit threading these because I have to get my glasses on, which I have. So I don't normally have to turn put my glasses on when I thread the other ones. So we'll get to the other baby locks here in a minute because they are awesome, okay. So I got it through the little hook thing back here, and now I got to get it through this eye of this looper. And this is where the glasses come into play because I can't see to thread things. Got a pair of tweezers, okay? We're just gonna pull this in here, and now this thread goes down underneath this other looper, okay? So we're gonna leave that down under there. Gonna pull this up just a little bit so I can get it under my needles. Okay, so we got that one. So that was the blue looper. That was the lower looper. Okay, there we go. So that wasn't too bad. So let's let's try the other one here. So the upper looper, whoops. So up here, I've got my thread and there's another one of those little tension things up here. So I'm gonna put this thread over here. Again, Jan's got her glasses on. So, you know, I'm just gonna go down through here. Okay, I've still I've got my foot up. So the tension's released and I'm going to pull that into that tension unit and then straight down. And now I'm following the green. And it goes into this one first and then there's some little green hooks down here. So here's one here. Now, this is where I usually have, a, I mess up. So I actually like to, um, I like to, I had to go look at the instructions because this one actually, it's easier than you think because you don't do anything with this one. So there's a blue dot right there. It just kind of lays in front of that, okay? And then there's a little spring up here. Let's see if I can see it. That's the hardest part for me is seeing this stuff. There we go, like that. And then it goes through this other looper. So I'm gonna put the foot down for a minute. 
and bring this down so I can get to that. Again, this one is going to, if you wear glasses, you may have to get your glasses out to do this one. And then I have to find the hole here. So this one's all manually threaded. So I got a hold of that with my tweezers. I always have a pair of tweezers out when I'm threading these sergers because it's so much easier to grab things. Okay. I'm going to pull that back. Okay. So I think I got that one. I'll look at my path to make sure. It looks pretty good. Okay. So now we're going to do the needles. Okay, so the needles up here, I like to do, this one is open on the left. So we're going to go ahead and do two. The other machines will do a little differently. So this one is a little different. It's got this little apparatus here that you go from the right and you kind of flip it over to the left like that. Whoops, I've got to get it flipped over. There's a little slot in there and it flips over there. There we go. And then you bring it back to the right again underneath this little tension unit. Okay. And I've got my foot back up again. Okay. And then it just comes down. And then you've got this little silver apparatus here that it's going to go up and under these little pieces here. Okay. So it kind of goes under, over, kind of under, and then back over again like that. Okay. So there's that. Now, this is the hard part for Jan, threading the needles. So we do have to thread the needles. Okay, this one is going to be, this, oh, this one has op two openings, I forgot. This one has an opening on the right and an opening on the left, the two needles. Not all the machines have that, so that's cool. Okay, then I have to try to thread the needle. So this is always my hard part. That's why I like the other machines so well, because they have needle threaders on them. And they also have looper threaders. So wait till you see these next two. All right, we're going to pull that through. I managed to get it in there. Let's see how we did. Whoops, I got, got it twisted, though. There we go. Got that one. Okay. And we're going to do the same thing. So how many people have threaded a serger? I have a lot of people that have that said, that have told me they've never had a serger and they've never threaded one. So if all you come, so make sure you comment and let me know, have you threaded a serger before? Okay, so this is going to do the same thing. I did the same thing. I went right to left, came back around, then back under here. This has been a good little serger. I like this one but it's a little bit tricky for me to get in the needles. There we go. Cause it kind of goes underneath there. There we go. Kind of goes under there. There we go. Then I'm going to go in the other to the left. This is the needle number one. I had a serger for a long time. Um, I used to make a lot of garments and um, I, Sergers are very important. No one ever threaded a serger. Okay, well, Lisa, you're going to get to see three sergers today. And I'm going to show you some of the reasons why I would use it. Okay. I think I need to, I need to get a better tip on my thread there. Okay, so here's another one. This is a tough one. I have to get that in the eye of the needle. If I turn it on, it might help. Ugh. It's the one I can never fit. There's a the lights are not as good on this one. Wait till you get the next one. The lights are a lot better. All right, we're going to pull this in. I think I got it. All right. But the big thing about this one, even though it's manually threaded, is because, um, is because it has um, this door that opens. Most sergers that are manually threaded do not have this much opening here to get down to work with these loopers. And you can see, you can get your hands in here to work on it. And it is, I think that's easier. So I'm gonna close this up and I'm set up now for what they call an, a four thread overlock. So it's just kind of your standard, <clears throat> a standard overlock stitch, okay? I'm gonna close this. So I think everything looks good. There's a couple of other little settings over here. Let me turn this a little bit over here. This is the stitch length. Again, it's a little manual dial. And then this little button here 
is what they call differential feed. And what that means is if you are doing something that's cotton so that doesn't stretch, usually you want it on like neutral, which is like in the middle one or neutral is usually one. So that this one's on one. Um, some of the sometimes if you do something um, knit, it may start rippling. So you might have this little ripple effect on your stretchy stuff. So then you want to push this this button or differential feed towards the number two, maybe not all the way up, but just a little bit at a time. Okay, so that is helps a lot when you're working with um, uh, stretchy fabrics. So now I've just got cotton that I'm going to sew on. So I'm going to leave this at about two and a half for the length. I've got all of my tensions. And normally when I start with these sergers, I put all my tensions on the number four, which is kind of the normal setting. So normally that works out pretty well. Okay. Um, but sometimes I have to adjust them slightly. So we're going to look at how it, how it looks here. And then we'll decide if we need to adjust those. So again, when with a mechanical machine like this, you do have to adjust your own tension. So let's go ahead and sew. The other thing this machine has that I really like, this little thing here has a little, oops, let me push this down just a little bit more. This little thing here has a, has a seam guide. So it's built into the machine and it's so nice because then you can adjust it so you're so you've got everything straight okay so that's kind of cool all right so let's go ahead and i'm going to be cutting because the, the blade is right underneath this little flipper right here okay so let's see how i jan did see if i did okay with the threading looks like it's making a stitch which is a good thing all right so since this is mechanical, we need to look at the stitch. The way I've I've learned about these stitches, and I like to look at, um, I also like to look at the colors. I usually put different colors when I'm showing these to people. The big squiggly line, the big squiggle is the green, and it was my my upper looper. So that looks pretty good. But can you see how? I've got some like little loops a little bit on the top. That's actually the lower looper and it's not quite meeting up right at my fabric. So that means that maybe my upper loop or my lower looper, excuse me, needs to be just a little bit tighter, okay? And then these two lines, the straight lines are the needles, okay? So I'm just gonna make my um, lower looper just a little bit tighter and see if it'll maybe tighten up just a teeny bit on the edge of the fabric, okay? So let's, see, let's do it one more time and see how that goes. So the, I usually do some tests. This is when, when I'm doing, uh, using a me mechanical machine, I have to adjust a little bit. You know, I have, to, I have to sew on my fabric and maybe make a couple of adjustments to my tension. And that looks pretty, that looks better. So I did have to adjust my tension a little bit and tighten up my loop, my lower looper just a little bit to make this line, to make these stitches line up on the edge of the fabric. So that looks pretty good. That's a four thread overlock. Now I also am looking on the back here. This looks just a little bit loose and that is needle number one. So I think I'm gonna tighten up needle number one just a little bit. So I learned to do this by because everything's color coded, and if I and if you put four different colors in your serger to learn about the um, the adjustment of the tension, it's so much easier because then you can see exactly what you're what you're working with. And so my one needle seemed a little loose, so I went ahead and adjusted that a little tighter. So let's see if that looks oh that looks much better. See how that looks a little bit better now. You're not getting the pokies there. That looks much better, okay? So that is how I have I, I would adjust that machine. This is Madeira, um, this is Madeira thread, a serger thread. And the serger, the Madeira third serger thread is so strong. It's very strong and it's very smooth. And so it runs through all of the machines really well. So I really don't have to do much adjustment for the tension. If you use a bumpier thread, it's very, very hard to adjust your serger tension, especially if you're using an older machine that's a mechanical style, okay? When you have to do your own tension, okay? So you can see that looks pretty good. It's 
got a nice stitch on it. You can adjust the width of the stitch also. And the width of the stitch, I don't know if you can see it over here. It's kind of on the side here. This is the width of the stitch right here. So I can adjust how, how wide my, my serge is as well. Okay, so and it's set right now, kind of in the middle, which is about five and a half. That's kind of normally where I put it, okay? So that's over there on that side. Okay, so this is one style of baby lock serger. This is a, an, a traditional kind of mechanical machine. Thread it yourself. You have to thread your own needles. Get you get your thread for your loopers in the bottom, but it does really help you because it opens up so you can get into those things. So this, so yeah, so Teresa, she's never, she, Teresa said she's never threaded a serger either. And, and once you get the hang of it, now I do like to, to, um, I do like to, like I said, piece with the serger. So I'll show you some piecing on the next one. Okay. Cause the next one is going to be, and I'm going to have to move my camera down. So just give me a second here. I have to kind of have the camera off to the, to the side so that it won't, I, I don't bump it too much. <laughs> so give me a second. I'm going to kind of move on down here to the second machine. Now this one's kind of in the middle. And this has been a, an extremely popular machine. This is still a four thread serger. So this does not do what they call a cover stitch. Cover stitch is like the, if you're wearing a t-shirt, like the hem on the bottom of your t-shirt. Um, so, and it also does, some of the machines also do what they call a chain stitch or a straight stitch. So you can actually straight stitch with a serger. With these four thread ones, you can't do that, okay? But this machine, compared to the last machine, there's something missing. Does, does anybody know what's missing here? Look up here. What's not on this machine? Can you see what's not what's not on this machine? There are no tension dials. This machine, this is the first one with auto tension. And auto tension for a serger is awesome, okay? So this makes this so easy. Now, this machine <laughs> for many, many years was called the Imagine. They just renamed it the Victory. So you'll notice that my little card here says Imagine, but it's still the same, okay? So what we're going to do with this one is um, I'm going to, you know what, I should have taken a needle out, so I guess I'll just show you that too. I'm going to show you how to set this up for a three-thread narrow overlock, and that's what I use. i got to find the screwdriver. There's a little screwdriver in here. Um, let's take the needle out. So when you do a three thread, you're going to take one needle out. Okay. And I'll turn this one on. Find the little switch there. Okay. See, now the lights are a lot better on this one too. This one has, this one has a little bit more, a little brighter lights. I put a new LED lights in here. So it was really nice because it was, it made it a lot brighter. It's not so, the color is not so yellow now because um, I changed the, the lights in it. But this machine has a lot of decorative ability too, because you can do some neat, um, you can do some flat locking. You can do flat locking with the other one, but this one here also has a blanket stitch and a ladder stitch. So you can do some decorative, decorative stitches with this one because of the way it threads, okay? And so I want to do a, and so look at all, and it gives me this little cheat sheet. So it helps me set up my serger so I know exactly what I need to do to do the stitch I want. So this one, three thread overlock. I want a three thread overlock narrow. That's the one that I want. I don't want a hem here or a rolled edge. I want to do a three thread narrow overlock. Okay. So that's what I'm going to use for my piecing, for my, for my quilt piecing. So I need to take out, it tells me that I, I need to have the right hand needle in and there's two needles. There's a left and a right. So I'm going to leave the right one in, but I'm going to take this left one out. Okay. So I'm just going to bring this up. And I'm going to take this out. I forgot to do this. So then you can see me do this. Better put my glasses on though. I do have to have my glasses on when I take needles in and out. So I don't drop them. But if you do drop it, I'll show you what happens. It's cool. Because there's a little thing at the bottom. There it comes. Oh, that one was tight. Okay, so I'm going to take the left hand needle out. Okay, set it back here. There's a little thing at the bottom of the machine. So if you do happen to drop your needles, there's a little thing down here. 
they kind of land down in this little tray. So then you can pull a little tray out to get your needles. I've dropped lots of needles into the machine, so. Okay. Now the other thing about this machine is this machine has an air threading, which is the tension. So there's no tension units. We don't have to deal with the tension, okay? And there's also, it's an air threading machine. So let's look at our little instructions here. It says that the needle needs to be the right needle for our three thread over rock narrow. I want the length of the stitch to be 2.5 to 3.5. Now, normally when I piece, I like it to be the length is the large dial down here. I don't know if you can see it very well. It's kind of hidden down here. Right here, I like it to be the shorter of the, the length. So I usually put it at 2.5. Okay, so it's right here. And I think, make sure, this one got turned over. So I needed, to, there's two sides to these dials. One's for the rolled hem. So I'm going to put it on standard and I want it to be 2.5. So it's not on rolled hem. It was on rolled hem by accident. And then it says the width should be 3.5, which is kind of medium now. When I piece though, I want it to be wider. So I always bring my, when I piece with my serger, I roll my my width out all the way as far as it goes because I don't want it to cut off hardly anything when I'm piecing my blocks. Okay, so I this little rolled this little roller, I roll it all the way out. That's the length. That's the width of the of the stitch. Okay, so we're gonna roll it all the way out. We're gonna ignore the width here. Okay, and then the stitch selector. So this one has a stitch selector. And it's this little knob over here. And what it does is this is the tension. It sets it for me. So this, this one tells me I need to have it on the letter B. So I moved it to the letter B. Okay. And then it sets the tension for me. Isn't that awesome? Okay. So I am only going to use one needle. I'm going to use, okay, so I'm going to take one of these off. Take one of these off. So I always like to not have the thread on if I'm not using it, okay? So, because it always has a tendency to get in the way and then it decides it's gonna go with the, everything else. So I usually take it off. So this, we're gonna use two loopers and two one needle, okay? So this machine is air threaded, okay? So we are gonna talk about some of this. It all explains it all in the lid right here. There's a really nice little thing and it tells us what to do. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to push this button in. Oops, set that at a second. Turn this a little bit. You push this button in. <laughs> Sorry, it's some, it, I had just threaded it, so it's doing this. Normally, you have to push this in and turn this dial until the little tubes pop out, and they just did. This little silver thing moves it, so if I do this, push this in, and then turn the dial toward me. I'm turning my hand wheel toward me until these little tubes pop out. That's where the air goes. Okay, so this is the air tubes right here. So now I've got it ready to thread. This little button up here is the two different loopers. So these, this one has ports instead of the loop. There's loopers here, but we don't have to mess around trying to get the thread in there at all. We're going to put them into these little ports and they're just going to poof right through there with air. So it's pretty awesome. So I want to do the lower one first, which is the one on the right. So I'm going to push this little dial over to the right. And then I'm going to start up here at the top, okay? So I have to pop this into a little tension unit at the top. So there's a little slot right here. I'm going to put this thread in there and make sure it clicks. Pull it straight down right here. And then I'm going, there's a little hook kind of right behind that slot. I'm just going to put it in there. And then I'm going to pull this thread down to my knee. So I have a little bit of slack, okay? You want to have a good blunt end so a good end on the end okay and this one's pretty good i think i cut these off with the scissors so i'm just going to push this thread down into that little hole that's right there about a half an inch or so okay leave a little slack and then this is where the magic is so watch this i'm going to push this little button and it's like a little bellows and i'm going to push it with a little bit of force and look here's the thread and it went through this looper over here the looper's right here and look the thread came just came through all i did was push that down and it came right through let's do it again it's pretty awesome i just love these little i love these air threading machines okay so we're going to do this again i'm just going to stick this into the hole 
like that. And my hands are very dry, I'm sorry. I put some hand cream on before I did this. Okay, and then I'm gonna give this little put this little button a push and it pops it right through, look. Here it is right here, okay? So I'm just gonna push this back and get it out of my way. You can just leave it hang, but I usually just kind of get it out of my way. So like that, okay? So there's the first one. That was the first looper. Second looper, I'm gonna push it over because we wanna do this, this little slot now. And this is going to be the upper looper, okay? So I'm gonna go up here again. There's a little slot right here, down. There's another little hook right above, right in that slot area. Okay, I'm gonna pull this down to my knee again. Hold the thread down to my knee so I have some slack. Make sure I got a good tip on there. Got my little kindergarten scissors here, but they're sharp. And then I'm gonna put this down about a half an inch or so into that little hole. Okay, like that. Then I'm going to use the little pumper again and I'm gonna push it down and look, it popped right out here. There it is. So wasn't that easy? Let's do that one again and see how fast that is. It's so easy to thread this machine. And you don't even have to have your glasses on. Look at that. There it is. Pops right through here. There it is. All right. So what do you think of that air threading? It's pretty awesome, huh? Now we need to do the needles. Because there's we're going to only have one needle on this one. And, but I have to do something before I can do that. There's a little line over here. I don't know if I, if I turn this, I think you can see it. Can you see this green? There's a green line on the cabinet of the machine and a green line on the hand wheel. So the first thing I need to do is release these air tubes. So I'm just gonna pull this little silver thing over and it tells you step-by-step step on this little thing or in the little cover right here, exactly what to do, okay? So it just goes step-by-step step right here. So now I'm gonna line up these lines over here because this one has a needle threader on it. So I don't have to thread those needles. I don't have to th thread those needles manually or in this case, one needle manually. So I'm going to go ahead and start up here with my thread, put it through this little notch, straight down. And there's a little hook right below the slot again, just like there was the other ones. And then this time I need to go up and over here. That's where the needle threads go. So I'm gonna go across under this little notch right here and then up and over, just like a regular sewing machine, okay? And then I'm going to go ahead, slide it in this little uh, thread guide. And then this one has a needle threader. So let me get a little closer. So you can, can you see this little silver thing right here? has two notches on it. So I'm, I'm threading the, the needle on the right. So I'm gonna push this little button to the right. It already was there, okay, to the right. Then I'm gonna pull this down. This little button comes down like this. I'm gonna hold it down. I'm gonna slide the thread underneath the little thing that comes out between the needle. And then I'm gonna let go. See, it's caught in there. And I'm just gonna flick this up with my finger and it just pulls it right through the eye of the needle. Look at there. So this one, is kind of the one in the middle. It has the air threading with the pumper and it also has um, a needle threader, a, a, more of a mechanical style needle threader um, so that you can easily thread your needles, okay? I'm just having trouble getting hold of the loop. There's a loop in the back. I'm trying to get in hold of it. There we go. All right. So this one's set up for a three thread overlock. And of course, this, this little reference guide comes with the machine and it's so nice because there's all the different stitches are listed here that you can do and how you thread them. Okay, and it's such a nice thing because I hardly ever get the manual out anymore because I have my little cheat sheet. The manual I read, you know, didn't know what all these little things meant. But then after you get the hang of it, these little, all you need is this little piece of paper and it helps you with all the different stitches. All right, so we'll set this back there and get it out of the way. So now I've got this set up to do my piecing. Except I drop, drop my scissors on the floor. Give me a second here. Take my glasses off so I can see them. Because we're going to need those again. Okay, so let's say we want to go ahead and we're going to piece a quilt block. I'm going to go ahead and close these. Close this. Okay, we got it all set up for a three thread narrow overlock. And that's what I use when I'm piecing quilts. 
And what I do is I use the edge of this foot right here. Can you see this kind of, it kind of angles out a little bit and right on the very edge, that's where I'm gonna put my fabric. And with this needle in this position, that makes a nice quarter inch seam. So I'm gonna go ahead and we'll just, uh, whoops, let's see if I can fold this. And I'm gonna lay this in, whoops, right along the edge there. My differential feed, we talked a little bit about that on the other one, needs to be on neutral, which is kind of one. Okay, this one it says neutral instead. We already has the stitch length and width set. And I'm going to go ahead, line up my edges. And it's just going to barely, barely cut. So usually when I piece quilt blocks like this, I have just a bunch of fuzz down here under the machine. Because it just barely cuts and it makes a nice quarter inch seam. Okay, let's see how we did. Looks pretty good. And actually, what I think I'll do, I think I'm happy with that. Um, that looks pretty good. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my stitch a little longer. I think, at, as I remember, I'm used to piecing on a different machine. So this one, I think I am going to go up to a three. Let's make the stitch a little bit longer. The width looks good. But I think the stitch is, the stitch is a little bit too close together. So let's try this again. Oh yeah, that's much better. Okay, there we go. And you got to be careful when you pull it out. Don't pull on it, so that you pull your pull your stitches out of whack. Okay, so there's my quarter inch seam, and it's very accurate. I mean, I've done a lot of quilts this way. You do need to do a little measuring, just measure to make sure that that's where it is. But I I use this edge of my my foot right here, this this little angle right here. I just run it right along that. Works really well. I, do, I like to do um, modern quilts like this, like with rectangles, squares, that kind of thing. Instead of doing like, um, you don't want to use a, a pattern that has lots and lots of triangles. It's a little hard with the serger. And you see the tension looks beautiful right from the beginning. Okay. So you don't have to, I didn't have to adjust the tension on this one. This one does have a slight adjustment on the tension down here. But the auto tension, normally this should be on neutral and that's where it is. And normally I have, don't have to do any kind of um, changing on that, okay? With the auto tension, it just helps me. I just set it on the dial here where it tells me on my, on my little paper, okay? So there is my quarter inch piecing stitch. I just love this, it's very accurate. But most of the time, like I said, what needle do you have in the right one? Um, this is a number, either a number 11 or a number 14 needle. Um, depending on the serger you're on, Jan, it depends on um, what kind of needles you use. You can use universal needles in both of these machines. Um, this ma machine, they normally have you put one called HAX11SP. It's kind of made for faster sergers. It's like a serger needle. So that's the ones I usually put in here. So this was a number 11, I believe. So I usually piece with a number 11. Okay, I have the right hand needle in. The right hand, the right hand needle. So I use a, a, a narrow um, three thread overlock for piecing. And it gives you a nice quarter inch seam. Now, depending on the serger that you have, you will need to adjust possibly where you place your um, where you place your material because I know for sure on the baby locks that's where it is. Okay, but it may not be like that on your machine. So you may have to do it some adjustment, but I, I like to, to piece with my serger because you can see I have this beautiful seam. It's all covered and there's no raveling. I don't have all these strings all over. Okay, so that's, that's, that's one of the things that I do all the time. I like to piece with my serger. Okay, so we have seen a mechanical machine with tension dials. We have seen a uh, machine with auto tension, air threading. Now wait till you see this one. This one has air threading on everything. It is so cool. So if you give me a second, I'm gonna move this um, camera because I need to go this way with it. So I'm, you're gonna be seeing the other machine right now. Cause, oops, got my fabric underneath there. So let me pull it over this way. 
kind of hard to keep the camera out of my way, so. Okay, so we're gonna go back this way. So don't get sick. I'm gonna I'm gonna flip the camera over here. <laughs> I got this arm. It's kind of strong. So okay, now this machine. Oops, I think we're gonna have to go a little closer. So this one is also a cert a four thread serger, like the ones that we've been doing. So you can see once I get the camera readjusted here. I gotta bring my computer a little closer. All right. So here are those same slots that we've been using on the other one. And this, there's no tension dials, okay? But this one also has another side to it. This one also, can you see the little lines right here? This one also is a cover stitch machine and a chain stitching machine. So this one has two, like this is two machines rolled into run. This is the Triumph, okay? So I can use it as a standard four thread serger, but then I can also use it as a cover stitch machine and a, um, and a, like a chain stitch machine. Okay. So the cover stitch is like on the bottom of your t-shirt. If you have a t-shirt on, it has the two lines and then it's all covered on the back. That's what we're going to do today. So I thought I'd thread that up for you so you could see the difference. So it's basically the same, but I'm going to use a different part of the machine on this one. I can do the same exact stitches that I did on the other two on this one. Um, but we're going to try, I'm going to show you the cover stitch part of it. So you use a little different um, tracks on this one. This one also comes with a card, a, my little cheat sheet. And so you can see this one has a lot of capabilities. So look at all the different options that I can thread. Now, the one that we did before was the three thread, um, whoops, two thread narrow overlock. Where'd it go? I had it here. Two thread, those are the flat locks. Let's see, three thread overlock wide, three thread overlock narrow. So this one, I could have done the same stitch I just showed you on the Victory. But what we're gonna do on this one, this one also allows you to use up to eight threads. Look at all the, the little spool pins. So you can do some decorative stuff with these combination ones. They're really cool. So there's like six thread, four thread, five thread safety. So there's a lot of really cool combinations. And then this one also has, one what they call the wave stitch so this one has this really cool decorative stitch that's really pretty for edgings okay so there's a lot of options on this machine and i don't want everybody i don't want anybody to panic because it, it's super easy to thread because wait till you see so let's go ahead and do our we're going to go to the cover stitch and this one i set it up so that it's going to be cover stitch left narrow so you can do cover stitch a couple different ways. You can use two needles on the left, two needles on the right, one needle on the left and on the right with a, with the middle missing, or you can use all three needles. So there's, there's up to three needles for the cover stitch. So I chose the cover stitch na left narrow. Okay, so I've already got it started. I put the needles in, so you wouldn't have to sit me see me struggle with needles. <laughs> Sometimes I have trouble with the needles getting them in. Okay. So, also, and I don't know if you can see, hopefully you can see here, since this does both cover stitching and overlocking, there's two sets of needles. So there's three in the front, that's the overlock, or I'm sorry, that's the cover stitch that we're going to do first. And then the if I wanted to do the overlock, it's these two in the back. So there's two different places you put needles, okay? So in the back is going to be the overlocking, and in the front is going to be the cover stitching. Okay, so I'm going to be using these front positions right now. So I've got them in the left hand side. So I said I was going to do the left narrow. So I've already got them in there. Okay, and they're in the first one and two position. And then the third one is empty. So I could have also done two and three and left one empty. I could use one and three or I could use one, two and three. So there's all those options in the front here. Okay, so I'm going to use one and two to start. And let's refer to our little cheat sheet here. So it says then the length should be somewhere between two and four. So my length, let's open this up. The length is the larger dial at the bottom here. I don't know if you can see it very well. Let me pull this off so you can see. Okay. This bigger dial right here. Okay. I have mine set on three. A little bit lower. There we go. You can see it. So I have mine set on three. So the large dial is for the length. Then it says 
that my um, tensions, so this width, we're not gonna cut. The, the, the cover stitch doesn't cut, so we're not gonna cut. So I've actually um, locked my blade because we were cutting before. This blade here is locked down right now. So I don't, ha I have it down. That's what it tells me to do. And then this button here is for the loopers. And this looper is now down. Because I, and since I'm not going to cut, I need to use a different configuration here for the loopers. So my, my little instruction sheet tells me to have it in the down position. After I have changed this, I think I just knocked the camera. So if I put this up and then I have to move the, the, um, the hand wheel so that, that it makes it come up and down. So I'm going to push it down again and then I'm going to move the hand wheel so that it goes down. See how that looper went down? Okay. So I know I've got it in the correct position now. My blade is down. It says locked right here. Put back up. You can see the word lock. Then we need to look at the chain stitch. So I'm going to put this back on. This is the little cover. There's two different covers that come with this machine. So this one is for the cutting and this one's for the cover stitch and the chain stitch. So I'm going to put this one on and it just slides on and off this little thing right here. It's real easy. Okay. And let's see. Oh, and then we need to talk about the tension. So there's a couple of tension dials on here and it tells me where to set them. So this one is going to be the... Um, chain needle tension. So the needle tension's over on the left here. Let me get a little closer here. So over here, and I have mine set, it says to set it between four and six. And in, in all the classes I've taken, she said she normally leaves it around five. So I, I just put it on five and I leave it alone. <laughs> and then the looper tension is over here. It's this dial here. And this one says between one and two. So I set it in the middle. I said one and a half. I figured that's a good place to, to start. Okay, so we I set that. I think we've got the needles in, everything's ready. So this is gonna be a little different threading. So we're only gonna use one looper this time. And so, you know, we used one needle last time. So this time we're just gonna use one looper and it's a chain looper. So this machine tells me even where to put all my threads. So the threads, this one says chain looper right here. You probably can't see it too well. And then my chain needles, one and two are the ones I'm using. So these are sitting in those positions and it even, it tells me where to put everything. Okay, so it's very user-friendly and everything's color-coded, okay? So now we're ready to thread. So I'm gonna go down to the threading position down here. So let's go down to the bottom. And this one also has a cover that tells you exactly what to do, okay? I'm gonna go down to threading. I'm gonna turn the hand wheel towards me and these little, tubes are going to pop out. Let me get this a little bit closer so you can see the tubes. And then I'm going to turn that. And as soon as the tubes pop out, then you know that you're ready for threading. Now, when we get this one, we have another fun thing. This one has air threading that has a little button. So it's got a little motor in it. I'm going to start by threading this chain looper. It's this one right here. I'm going to drop it down through this little hole right here, kind of down. And then I always have to move this out of my way because there's a little thing that goes underneath on the back okay there we go and then it goes up underneath this little tension unit so there's a little tension unit right there okay then i'm going to pull this down to my leg again just like i did before and i'm going to put this in to the chain looper so if i get a little closer upper lower and then the c means chain so that's the one we're going to use for this one going to touch this into the hole, but same with distance. Now this one has a button. Remember the other one had a little pumper? This one, I just have a little button that I can, I can push, make sure I have enough thread. So I'm just going to push this, but there's a problem. Where'd it go? Do you see any thread over here? This one hides. So when I do the chain, there's a little door right here. So this one hides. So I'm going to pull this open. Okay, and look, there's the thread right there. So it should go into this little trough over here. So it kind of hides when you do the chain. It doesn't come out, it just stays inside. Okay, so that's that That's that one. This one I had the cool button to push. Okay, now we're gonna do the needles. Now the needles are even cooler because guess what? They also have air too. So this one has an air threading system on it. I love it. 
Um, since with these, I usually do the first needle first because the opening for the thread guide is on the right. So I usually do needle one, then needle two, just because it's easier to get it in here. So here's my thread. These are the lines I need to use to, to uh, thread the machine. So I'm gonna drop this thread into line number one, because this is needle number one. I'm just gonna lay it down here. And you won't be able to see this, but there's a there's a little bracket back here that's a little tension unit, and you have to slide it into that, and it's way on the back. I don't know if you can see it. It's right here, the silver thing. So I just put it into the first one. And then this one, instead of going over, up and over here like we did before, we're going to use the silver one. So we're going to go under and over and back down, okay? And then through the thread guide, and this is needle number one. So it's going to be the left hand needle. Okay. Now this one's so cool because look, I'm going to put my foot down. And then this one here, there's a little button and it says chain cover. So that's what we're doing is chain cover. So I'm going to pull this thing down here. I did put my foot down to get it out of the way. Pull this little thing down. Let me find my scissors here. And I am going to turn on the air. What you're going to do is you, you don't have to get this in the eye of the needle. You just want to get it close. I'm going to turn the air on. It's going to be noisy, I warn you. Okay. And then I'm going to get it close to the eye of the needle. And I'm going to pop this little handle up. And look. It went right through the eye of the needle. Let's do the, do the second one. I just love the air threading. It's so cool. Okay. So I'm going to put my foot back up. Now this is needle number two, so there's three slots. I'm gonna use the second slot this time. Have to get it into that little thing in the back again. I always have to stand up to do that. There we go. Straight down, under and over and down. I'm gonna put that through the little guide right here. Okay. I'm gonna cut this off so I have a nice end on my thread. Put my foot down and then I'm going to bring that needle threader back down. Okay, so I'll get closer, bring the needle threader back down. And I'm going to get it close. I'm going to turn the air on. Here's the button. I'm going to turn the air on, get it close, and flick the little, the little handle back up and look right in. Isn't that cool? For those of us who can no longer see to thread needles, that is the most awesome thing ever. I love the air threading. So now it's on the needles. One of the four thread sergers that's called the Acclaim also has that. So that is so cool. Okay, so now we're done, we're done threading. This is gonna be a cover stitch. So I'm gonna bring this up to serger because I'm ready to sew off of threading. Now, if I try, if I leave this down and I try to put all my, my covers up, look, it won't shut. So it has like a little safety device on it. So we need to be on serging to be able to sew. Now the difference between Cover stitch. Cover stitch, you need to be on the fabric to start it when you first start. So I'm just going to fold this in half and then I'll show you my little hem. I'm not a very good hemmer, so don't, don't, don't look too close. Okay. So let's just get this started. You do need to start with your needles in the fabric for a cover stitch. Okay. So I'm just going to put the needles down and I've got, I'm in the fabric and I'm just going to sew. sews very fast. So here is my cover stitch. So you know how you like on the bottom of your t-shirt, there's the two lines and then the cover on the back. So there's our cover stitch. But when you use this, you're normally using this, you know, you fold your, your shirt or whatever. And I've got my new, my uh, differential feed still on neutral. So let's say this is our hem. Let me see if I can kind of press the hem in and turn it. So here's the edge of your fabric. Okay. And on your foot here, there's some little bumps and that tells you where your needles are. So these left hand ones are where your needles are. So I'm gonna run my left hand, this little bump right along the edge of that fabric and it's gonna cover stitch and I'm on the top of the fabric. So I can usually see it. Sometimes I have to take like a marking pen and just put a little mark there so I can see it. This is fairly, 
I can opaque, I can kind of see through it. So let's see how I did. Okay, so the trick is to cover that raw edge and then have these two beautiful lines on the outside. Look at there. I did it. I even got it pretty straight. That's amazing. So that is a cover stitch. And this one has the air threading on the needles, on the looper, um, all three loopers. And the machine also, this is the other thing that I like about this machine too. This one has a speed control on it. So like a lot of our sewing machines, it has a speed control, which is really cool. So you have a little more adjustment for that. The one thing I love about this machine is I'm always forgetting to put the foot down on my serger. So if I put this foot up, and here's the foot lever over here. If I put that up, guess what? See, it won't sew. It won't even go. I'm pushing the foot controller down. It won't go. Okay. So it has a sensor on it. So you have to have the foot down in order to use it. So that that's what's really neat about this one. I love that. I know that sounds like a silly thing, but I've wasted a lot of thread. So see, I put it down and now it works. There's our cover stitch. So what do you think? This is such a neat machine. And they make machines that just do cover stitch and not do the 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 um, the overlocking too, but this one does both. So so Baby Lock has several machines other than these three, but this is sort of the the um, the variety pack. I wanted to show you one that was manual, one that was had the air threading and the auto tension, but didn't have everything. And then this one kind of is the one that has everything. Okay. All right, so I think Tim has a customer, so he may not be able to come back and say goodbye. Oh, it's Judy. Oh, it's Judy. Okay. All right, so it's Judy. Okay, so so we're going to go ahead, and, and Tim's going to say goodbye. So what do you think? Is there any questions? Wasn't that cool? All the different kinds of surgeries. I'm going to get the camera up here for Tim. I'll turn it around for you, Tim. Oh. And get the mic. Okay. There you go. All right. Again, thanks for joining us. I uh, hope uh, I saw a lot of people who have, you know, mentioned they never used surgery, never threaded a surger. Um, it's a lot easier to kind of see what we're talking about if you come in person. So come on in if you want a demonstration like live. I know it's a little more difficult because the smaller space, things like that. But again, it is uh, National Surgery Month. So there are some different promotions going on, um, different discounts. And um, but yeah, again, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Enjoy this. I wouldn't say it's lovely weather, but enjoy the weather or, or just stay or say just snuggle up at home and, and so that's fine too. So again, as a reminder, we do appreciate when you uh share, comment, and like like our our Facebook Live. It gives us a little more exposure. So we definitely greatly appreciate that. Do it again. Um, you know, I don't see why we should change anything. We'll just do another drawing next year. So do that to get uh next get, week, you mean next week, yeah. <laughs> to get back in the um in the drawing. So again, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week. Yep. I don't know what we're going to do yet. We haven't well, decided. Hey, you know what? That means you better come back to find out what yeah, we're doing. Yeah, we haven't so. decided. I'll let you know in a day or two. We'll next. decide. We haven't decided. What we, I knew what I was going to do, and then the, we, the, we sold we kind of switched it up. So, so. yeah. <laughs> so, we, uh, again, more reason to come back next week. So, again, thanks for joining us. See you next week. Have Bye. a good week. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Thank you. I can't see both. Uh-oh. What do you got now?